Oh crap, so the the alien, the reptiles, spat venom. They do have venom. He spit it in Tony's eyes. Is he blind now? Hey folks, and welcome back to Jay's Retro Reactions. Today we're going to be reacting to episode 2 of V the Original Series. I really, really enjoyed episode 1. And just to give you a quick recap of what happened, we've seen the aliens arrive on Earth. They look human, except their voices sound a little funny. They're claiming that their planet is, in a, is going through a catastrophe in relation to their environment and their climate. And they need Earth's help because we have certain chemicals that they can use to fix their own planet. All sounds very reasonable and very plausible. However suddenly strange things begin to happen. We see the scientists are alleged to be part of a conspiracy plotting against the aliens and they start disappearing and other scientists turn up and suddenly are very su supportive of the aliens when before they weren't. It looks like they've been brainwashed. Other scientists have to go on the run and we've seen the scientist family go into hiding with the Jewish grandpa because he wanted to help them because he was in the concentration camps and no one helped them. And in addition, we have Mike, a reporter who manages to get onto the spaceship in secret and he sees the aliens eating live rodents. And then he gets into a fight with one of the aliens and it turns out when he rips off his face, he's actually a reptile underneath. So lots happened in the first episode. We also seen Julie become part of a resistance cell and we've seen Dr. Ben get killed when they were trying to steal lab equipment. So yeah, a lot happened in episode one and I'm really looking forward to episode two. So as usual, enough of me talking and let's get on with the show. Okay, so Mike managed to get away from the aliens who tried to capture him in episode one at Christine Walker's place. I would have thought though he would have went with Julie to form part of the resistance cell, but obviously not. Place looks messed up, so there must have been some sort of battle here or something. Are the aliens now overtly attacking the humans? No, don't shoot me! Where is everybody, huh? I don't know, they're gone. How long ago? About three days. That's Mike's son's friend, isn't it? But your ranch hands came to town and threw a bomb right into the squad vehicle. Okay, so the locals are getting annoyed at the martial law that the aliens have imposed. And some of them who had guns went and attacked the aliens. And suddenly these lights were in the sky. Some people screamed and ran. So the aliens now are definitely putting down any signs of resistance they see and probably using the martial law excuse to do that. And claiming these people are working with the scientists in this conspiracy they allege is happening against them. Then I saw these awful eyes. And then what happened? They broke through the door and took them. So Mike's son has been stolen or kidnapped by the aliens. That must have been deliberate as well because they must have known Mike has this videotape of the alien's face being ripped off and that they're reptiles and that he could expose them to the world. So they're probably going to use Mike's son as leverage against him saying if you release that tape, we'll harm your son. Which to be honest is very effective leverage. He was real brave, Sean was. But me, I hid back in the closet. I was scared. Don't be too hard on yourself, kid, in fairness. It's, it would take a lot of courage to take on reptile aliens. They took them. Everybody to the square. There was a lot of shouts and crying. And then the lights were gone. So they've taken the whole town up to the mothership. For what purpose? Mr. Donovan, will I ever see my mom and dad again? Probably not, kid. Josh, when I came to visit Sean, I brought him something. Oh, that's right. In the first episode, Mike found out that that gift he gave his kid is a key to open doors on the alien mothership, so he needs that back. What is it? It's a key. It's gonna get you into what? The belly of the whale. And he's probably gonna use that key to try and get his son back, who he knows has been kidnapped and put on the mothership. And by the way, I just want to give a shout, quick shout out to all the commenters who commented on my last uh, reaction video to V, particularly the, the gentleman who told me that he's or one of his mates had starred in the film Beastmaster with Mark Singer. Uh, so that was interesting to hear. And also to the other commentators who said how much they love this series and were glad to see it being reacted to. So thank you very much for supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. To Robin Maxwell. But she's gone away. Well, not that far away, huh? 
So Daniel's letting the family know he knows that the Maxwell family, the scientist family, are hiding in their garage or garden shed, whatever it is. And I will get her, won't I? Otherwise, I'll just have to turn her whole damn family in. Daniel is basically saying that if he doesn't get Robin, he's going to dob in the whole family. That's why the grandfather is disgusted with him. So this is Dr. Ben's funeral. Go! Get out of here! You can't bad. We wanted... You go! You can't really blame the father here for taking it out on Willie. Even though Willie seems like a nice guy and he saved the father's life in episode one, but, you know, his kind did kill his son, so he's, of course he's going to be upset. He's grieving, you know? <laughs> Plus, Dr. Ben was his golden child. He probably was half expecting the other kid, the thief guy, to get killed at some stage, given he was involved in a life of crime, but... It's probably more of a shock that it was Ben who died, who was, as I said, the doctor and his golden child. Shalom. So Daniel did inform on his own family, and the grandfather is now going to be taken. And that's probably why he's all up in his Jewish gear, because it reminds him of when he was taken for the Holocaust. I can't believe Daniel did that. It's okay so far. Now we have to run the roadblock. Katie, honey, be quiet. Everything's all right. We're never going to make it with her crying. Okay, fair play to this gardener, dude. So he got the Maxwell family out in the back of his gardening van. <laughs> Where's he going to take them, though? To the countryside or somewhere like that, where it's going to be hard to find them? So we've seen these two cops in the last episode. One of them was nice and one of them was a bit of a dick on the side of the aliens, so... Hopefully we get the nice cop that's going to help them out here. What's the story back there? No story. Good stuff. He did what he was supposed to do and helped them out. Fair play to him. Anyway, uh, the tunnel runs down underneath the city. Uh, connects up to some really nifty places. So the doctor's brother, the thief, the criminal, is now helping the resistance, which is understandable. He probably wants to get revenge for the... The dead brother, because before he didn't care when the brother was asking him to help. He was saying it's a perfect opportunity to make money. The black market's booming. But yeah, obviously the death of his brother has changed his mind here. And it looks like Julie is permanently injured from that laser shot she got trying to save the doctor in the first episode. She took one to the hip. Who took my father? They said arrested? But they promised amnesty. See, Daniel, you're just a fool. You trusted the aliens. On what basis? Like, what basis did it, did it give you to trust them? And now you surely you should wise up and leave that visitor force and join the resistance. Here comes our boy, back from El Tepia. Somebody hidden back here, but they're uh, gone now. So he's going to get, what, arrested and sent to the mothership as well for God knows what? <sighs> oh, Steve. Don't tell me Mike's mother has the hots for the alien guide, Steven. It looks like she does. I want to see what this unlocks. They've got to have some Achilles heel, some weakness, something we can use against them. And we need to find out where the people are who disappeared. 100% Mike, do your intel gathering before starting fighting back. Because then you know, as you said, what their weak spots are. Where you can hit them and where you can hurt them. To just blindly go fighting them without any of that knowledge is poor from a military standpoint of view. My superiors decided to take your family in for questioning. But they'll be home soon. And grandfather too. He isn't well. He's with our doctors, though, and they're very good. To be honest, Daniel, if I was you, I'd take that laser gun and shoot this guy or hold him hostage and demand my family back and then hopefully get them back and make a run for it. You're getting a promotion to my second in command. What? Yes. Congratulations. Okay, so they're stroking his ego by giving him a promotion to say, oh, well done for informing on your family and basically handing them all over to us to do God knows what. And he's stupid and drunk enough and young enough to accept it. Right. I'm glad you like it. And I'm proud to have you in my unit. <laughs> Again, I can see the, the similarities with the Nazi and communist regimes when they take over, find the useful idiots, the collaborators who will work with you, bribe them with money, with fancy houses, with positions of power and influence, and then get them to turn on your own people or their own people. So 
So Mike and his buddy are trying to sneak back onto a shuttle to go up to the mothership and use their fancy key to see what they can find out. So how are we going to handle him? How about the direct approach? And for some reason, even though the aliens are very advanced, they haven't developed infrared or heat detecting sensors. So Mike and his friend are just able to sneak on. No problem. I'm really sorry to bother you like this. Oh, my shrimp boat, it gets a flat tire. So I really need an inner tube. Ah! <laughs> His shrimp boat got a flat tire. Good one. Okay, that's Daniel's mother. We can see amongst the prisoners there. Daniel's dad as well. And the gardener, so they're all part of the same prisoner group being brought up to the mothership. All right, same drill. Only this time I'm not gonna trip. So Mike and his friend have got spotted and now we have a good old laser fight. Will they manage to get away? If anyone knows how they did those laser gun effects, please let me know, because I'd be interested in finding out. Oh crap, so the, the alien, the reptiles, spat venom. They do have venom. He spit it in Tony's eyes. Is he blind now? Crap, so Mike's got hit by the laser. Tony's got the venom spat in his eyes. They're captured now as well. Julia Parrish? Yes? Robert Maxwell, anthropology. It's my daughter, Robert. Hello? So the Maxwell family have ended up with Julie's resistance group in the underground base that the thief guy is sorting out with the gangs, the LA gangs, because this is their territory and he said he'd work out that they could stay there, the resistance cell. So they're all coming together. Here, let me help you. So hopefully Robin has copped on from the first episode because it's really her fault that Daniel found out because she got a bit bored stuck in that chalet in the back garden and she came into the main house and then Daniel saw her when he got home. So hopefully, even though she's young and stupid, she has learned a couple of lessons about being a little bit more careful so she won't compromise the resistance group and their new base. I was supposed to be a doctor, not a plumber, some kind of rebel. It is quite a big leap, to be honest. One day you're a doctor and scientist, and next day you're a rebel leader against an alien invasion force. But I suppose, if you look at any resistance group, they normally turn out to be ordinary people put in extraordinary circumstances that have to fight back and learn the art of war, I presume. All you need to do is trust your instincts. Trust yourself as much as everybody else trusts you. Fake it. We won't know the difference. Fake it until you make it. Always good advice. And always advice I gave to people I mentored in business when they moved up into more senior positions. Everyone feels scared. Everyone thinks they can't do the job. And everyone thinks they're going to get found out when you move up uh, a couple of levels. And I always say fake it till you make it, until you feel comfortable, because absolutely everyone feels that way when they get promoted first or they take a leadership position for the first time. Several times you've caused a bit of trouble, Mr. Donovan. That's a good one. You'll soon have no more worries, Mr. Donovan. So what has Diana planned for Mike? That's the question. Great, an alien torture chair. And Daniel's father gets the joy of going first. My instincts tell me that he'd be too difficult as a subject. That's why I decided not to bother. Take him to the final area. What is the final area? I would have thought you'd find the difficult game far more interesting. But anyway, you're probably... What's this guy's game? This blonde alien guy? Because he's obviously playing on Diana's ego by saying, Do you know what? You probably couldn't convert Mike anyway, so you're probably better just to bring him to the final processing area, which is, I presume, where they kill him. And by playing that card, Diana's ego is flaring and going, Hmm, you think I can't do it? I'll prove to you I can do it. So he gets Mike turned into a convert. But why would he want that? What's the game here? Plus, I presume that also means that Daniel's father is being brainwashed or converted at this moment in time in that chair thing. And that's what that chair thing does. Some of us, a very few of us, just don't believe in what our leader's doing or his plans. What are his plans? I don't have time to tell you now. Okay, so this blonde-haired alien 
is, if I understand him correctly, part of a resistance group within the aliens who don't believe that what the aliens are doing to Earth and the humans is correct. And are resisting by working with the rebel humans, or planning to work with the rebel humans, and that's how they want to make contact through Mike. Robin's outside again. I don't trust when I see this girl outside. She continuously screws up. See, she's wandering off again. Has she not learned her lesson? Obviously not. Ah! And here we go. She's caught by the alien. Surprise, surprise. What did you expect, Robin? It was hurry. Martin couldn't make it, so you'll have to wear my uniform. Oh, lots of luck. I'll never be It'll able to. stretch enough to fit. Hard to believe there's a reptile under that lady's skin. A shuttlecraft is on its way up now. I think you should be able to slip aboard if you keep your glasses on and your mouth shut. Okay, she's helping Martin, the blonde-haired alien, out, and they're both working to get Mike off the ship. I don't even know your name. It's Barbara. Godspeed, Mike. Oh, I still couldn't date you, Barbara, because I know there's a reptile under there, but you look pretty decent, in fairness. That's it, Mike. You've shot her. Move away. Move away from the unconscious girl, Mike, please. And now Robin's on the mothership as well. Brilliant. As I said, that girl has to be one of the most annoying characters. She, like, she got the first family cast. She got Daniel's mother, grandfather and father sent to the mothership. And then she goes wandering again and gets caught again. Yeah, Julie really wants a chance to study one of them up close, you know, find out what makes them tick. Yeah, let's say we paid a visitor a visit. And I presume that's Mike, that they're just going to kidnap for their alien test subject for Julie. Julie, you got your glasses! Your glasses! Check it out! Well, at least Mike is now in contact with the resistance cell, but maybe not in a way that he would have planned or we would have expected. You bunch of stupid bozos. What the hell do you think you're doing? Yeah, it is, Mike. I thought so. Put your guns down, for God's sake. Who's in charge here? I guess you could say she is. Plus, Mike and Julie know each other from Christine Walker's house. Well, know each other to see anyway, so at least Julie could vouch for him that he wasn't an alien, and plus they can hear from his voice that he sounds human. Where'd you get the uniform? They had a sale. Ow! You did that on purpose. I did not. <laughs> they had a sale. I went down to my local supermarket and just picked one up. It's 50% off, why not? Don't you have any Novocaine? I do, but I have to say... You are a doctor. More or less. So I presume this alien group that's resisting against the leader's plan for Earth, as they said themselves, is probably akin to, like, Rommel and those guys and von Stauffenberg who tried to blow up Hitler in World War II, you know, part of the German command structure who didn't necessarily agree with Hitler's plans. I presume that's what the parallel is here, looking at the whole Nazi analogy that's happening throughout this series. How'd you know about Christine? Because I was there. Why didn't you warn me? Because I didn't know whose side you were on. I'm on the right side, kid. Okay, that makes sense now why she didn't help Mike on the night of his almost capture by the aliens at Christine Walker's house. Because she's saying, Christine Walker's their spokesperson. I didn't know if you were working with them or not, which is fair. Listen, this could have happened right here on Earth. Huh? Uh, up to 60 million years ago, the reptiles ruled the Earth. Then, bam, a meteor. The smartest reptiles who weren't equipped to handle the heat like mammals are. Simply died. Well, it is true that the dinosaurs did get wiped out by a meteor, that much we know. But it's not true that they went totally extinct because birds are actually descended from dinosaurs, believe it or not. And it turns out that a lot of dinosaurs were actually feathered. So our information on what dinosaurs were has definitely evolved from what would have been thought about when I was a kid in the 80s, which is just big scaly things with tiny feet and gigantic. A lot of dinosaurs were quite small, actually. And again, just for the conspiracy theorists out there, as I mentioned before, and in most of my videos, I do read conspiracy theories for a bit of fun. It's To me, it's like sci-fi sometimes. But there is a conspiracy theory, going back to the whole reptilian thing, where the dinosaurs never fully went extinct, which they didn't. 
as we know, they're birds. But there is a theory that says that some of them survived underground. The more intelligent ones and over the past 60 million years have evolved into a super advanced race and they control the world and they are behind the whole UFO phenomenon, etc, etc. So again, if you're interested in reading that, I don't believe it. You may go and have a quick Google on it and you'll find loads of stuff. Find out what their hidden goals are. Hidden? Sure. They've lied to us before. And that is good advice from Julie in fairness because we do know the aliens' true agenda is obviously not to correct the climate catastrophe on their planet. We do know they're kidnapping humans. We do know they have another agenda. But what is that agenda? That is the thing to find out. So I agree with Julie here. This is the smart goal to pursue. Hold it! So the dad has noticed that Robin's missing. But to be honest, mate, the way Robin's behaving, you should have given her a smack in the arse since she was a young one because obviously she hasn't learned how to be responsible. And it looks like she took that from the dad because this idiot's now after getting captured by the aliens as well. That's two of them now captured by the aliens who know where the resistance headquarters are. That family, they cause nothing but trouble. I say, show them all out, let the aliens take them, you'd be better off in the long run. It's come to my attention that you've developed a relationship. Is she attractive to you? Not like you are. So would a human be attractive to a lizard? That is the question we're about to find out the answer to. I want your help with an experiment involving you and her. So Diana is obviously the Mengele of the aliens, and she wants to use Robin in a medical experiment with this young alien guy that Robin fancies. And I'm not going to lie, because I do know what this experiment is. I won't ruin it for you guys, but please keep watching. You don't want to miss this. I'm awfully sorry for your daughter. No, wait. My wife, my other daughters are up there. So the aliens are blackmailing the dad by saying, we've got your daughter. Unless you tell us where the resistance headquarters are, we'll kill your daughter. Honestly, it's a hard decision for a dad to make, but... It really needs to come down to the old Spock quote. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. And if he was truly moral, he would put his own selfishness, which is his love for his daughter, below the needs of the group and the lives of all those other people who helped him and his family out. And that includes his wife and his younger son as well, don't forget. I have children too. The camp will not be taken until a certain time. No, you don't have kids, mate. You have eggs. You're a lizard. You have eggs. But if you warn the others, Robin would be quite severe. No. Mate. No. No, I won't. The alien is sweetening the deal by saying to Maxwell, we know your wife and younger son is in the rebel headquarters, so we'll let you take them out as long as you don't warn the resistance before we go in. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, if I was in that position, I know what I said before about the needs of the many outweighing the needs of the few, but I can get all of my family out now. That's tough. Would I be willing to lose all my kids and my wife for strangers, even though those strangers help me? Mm, that's a real tough decision. It's okay. I won't let anybody hurt you. I want to go home. So very clever by Diana. Get Robin in a very vulnerable emotional state and then send in Brian who she fancies. And then Brian makes the move on her and they're going to have happy, happy adult fun time. While Diana is obviously making a little porn video for her later viewing pleasure. We have to arm ourselves so we'll be able to protect all of our equipment when we bring it down from the mountain camp. Uh, listen. So the resistance cell is going to attack an alien armory to try and get weapons, which makes sense because they, their ordinary guns are probably not strong enough to fight against the aliens. Plus reptiles, I presume, would have hardened skin and bullets would be difficult to penetrate. So having those laser guns would make a lot more sense. We'd uh, hate to lose you, Mr. Donovan. I'd hate to lose me too. <laughs> Good answer, Mike. But definitely, you can see the eyes between Julie and Mike there. There's something brewing, definitely. 